Hello everyone, today is Thursday, September the 6th, 2018. It's right at 4 o'clock, right when this fair, the Surrey County Agricultural Fair out in Mount Erie, North Carolina, is supposed to open. And I did it. I made it out here and got, uh, got my booth opened up, ready to go. I don't see a whole lot of people coming in here yet. But I am very worn out and very tired. Uh, I drove until about... 1.30 in the morning, and then stopped at a Walmart, and you guys will be proud of me. I stopped at a Walmart that had the no overnight parking signs posted around the parking lot, but yet there was a bunch of 18-wheelers out there, so I just parked in and amongst the 18-wheelers and stayed the night anyway. Yes, I know, I am such a rebel, right? But... Being as I kept expecting to get that knock on the door for somebody asking me to leave, I did not sleep very well. I got a total of maybe four hours of sleep. Got myself out here to this fair, and it is hot out here. It feels like the middle of July, even though it's September. Got my boots set up. Went and got myself a 30-minute nap, and now here I am speaking to you guys. I guess I can give you guys a quick little spin around. Uh, you guys have all seen Ferris before. You got the carousel, the Ferris wheel back here. Uh, my uh, my shower house is going to be in that building over there. And my camper is actually on the other side of this fence, a little bit further back that way, about 50 yards away. So it's a nice, tight little setup. But it looks like uh, the sun is going to be coming in on my back at least half of my work day. Hence, myself being in silhouette here, and there's really nothing I can do about it. Sorry, guys. But y'all aren't here for that, are you? It is Thursday, and y'all are here for Short Story Thursday. Sorry, I had to pause for a minute to do a drawing. People are starting to arrive, so let me get this one done. I'm going to tell you guys the story of the absolute worst day of my life uh, that did not involve something or someone dying. The worst non-death day of my life. The year was uh, 2006, and I had been going to Chattahoochee Technical College for a while. I was working on getting associates in applied technology with a focus on web design, graphic design, and pre-press. Uh, and I had been doing it. I felt pretty smart getting the lottery players to pay for it the entire way. I was a few months, a few credits away from graduating, uh, but I entered a contest between technical colleges, something called Vika Skills USA. The contest I entered was one called Advertising Design, and it wasn't hard to win state because really there wasn't a whole lot of people competing. There wasn't a lot of people taking it serious, I guess. Uh, so a few weeks later, we were heading off to uh, Kansas City, Missouri for nationwide finals. Now, I was 25 years old and not very well traveled at the time. I had only been on a plane maybe a handful of times before that, and I was with a group of college friends that I had only met just a few weeks before, and they were also there to compete in the nationwide competition in other divisions like HVAC, electrical, and hospitality. But I was there for advertising design. And even though this was a competition between technical schools, they, most of these colleges that we were competing with were not even four-year colleges. And uh, even though it, it didn't seem like it was something that should have been taken very seriously, they took things like your uniform and your dress and things like that very serious. They even had a handbook they wanted us to read so that we would know the proper way to wear our collars, our ties, our name badges on the right side, and the, uh, the logo at the right height, that kind of thing. It felt very military almost, but it wasn't hard to learn. They gave us a small handbook, and we were able to read through it pretty much on the plane ride on the way there. And one of the first things they did was they ushered a bunch of us, 500 at a time, into an auditorium and gave us all test on the contents of that handbook. Now the test wasn't very hard, like I said, it was all about the stuff that we had just read about on the, the plane ride over. 
So pretty much it was a competition just to see who could read the test first and get it filled in because it was just that easy. And just like regular high school tests, it was one of the deals when you are done, you take the finished test to the front of the auditorium and then you leave. Uh, so this, this doesn't sound like a terrible premise, right? This doesn't sound like a terrible day either, does it? I'm in a nationwide competition. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri with friends. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go compete in advertising design using uh, Illustrator and Quark Express and, uh, and, and Photoshop. Well, what happened next crushed me terribly. What happened next was out of those 500 people, when I was finally done with the test, I looked around and I counted maybe 10. Now you could say, well, of course these guys are fast at reading. These are college students. Yes, these are college students and the colleges are college accredited. They are their two year colleges, but they are colleges and these are college students. Yes, I will agree with that. But these guys were my competition. When I was going to leave that college and go try to find a job as a graphic designer, these were the guys I was going to be up against for a job. And just looking at that, and I can do the math this quick, that put me in the bottom 0.05% in speed of reading. Now my comprehension of what I had read was fine. It's always been college level as far as comprehension goes. My speed has always been pretty slow, but I got, have gotten three things. When I was in college, I was running a solid 4.0 because I had found ways to compensate. By using a scanner with a document feeder on the top and then running it through an optical character recognition software and then re running that through a read program, I was able to get the computer to read my books to me. I also had a special needs program in the college that provided me with recordings of the curriculum whenever it was available. And so, uh, and I took less classes at one time, especially in areas that I was really uh, challenged with. So through all these different ways I had found to compensate, I was holding a solid 4.0. But in that room that day, the reality of the situation hit me square on the head. These people around me were my competition, and I was not holding up. I knew at that point that even if I got through college, even if I did well and I held that 4.0, and I did all the way to the end, then the chances of me actually being successful in the field I wanted to were nil, were not, were futile. Because, because any aptitude test that I was going to be given when applying to any company or any job is probably going to include a reading test with a time limit and there was not going to be any kind of special provision for my disability. I'm dyslexic. I am terribly dyslexic. And I was trying to be a graphic designer. Now I was able to pull myself up that day. I was able to go compete in the competition and no, I didn't win any prizes. I did about average. And I went home, I finished my degree, I held the 4.0, and then I did graduate and still, still trying to convince myself that I had what it took to be a commercial graphic designer. I went on and got a position as a graphic designer in a large chain, something called Office Max. But after nearly a year of holding that position, having screw up after screw up after write up after write up of terrible mistakes I was finally let go and I finally admitted to myself my limitations and I stopped trying to be a graphic designer a commercial graphic designer in any way so what is the takeaway from this story well learn from me guys 
when you have a disability, a learning disability that is going to severely hamper whatever field it is that you are trying to get into, instead of struggling tooth and nail to try to still make it in that field, be honest with yourself about your own limitations and don't try to do something futilely that if you're completely honest with yourself, you know you're not able to do. A blind person's never going to be a bus driver, guys. I know that that's not a popular opinion. That's not something a lot of people uh, want to hear or even say nowadays. You hear a lot of, you can be whatever you want to be as long as you focus on it. You can do whatever you want to do as long as you set your mind to it. Um, you hear that left, right, and center. But that doesn't make it true. Be honest with yourself about your abilities and your limitations and work with your strengths. And don't waste a bunch of your life trying to be something you're not able to be. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Please don't forget to smash that like button. Leave comments, leave questions, leave suggestions. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell icon to start receiving notifications. I love you all very much, and I will see you again in the next video.